Good morning. I'm MJ Moss, and I'm here with a bag of recycling because I come here all the time. I am a local realtor and a National Association of Realtors Green designee, which means that I took classes on the environment and housing for energy and environmental conservation. Florence Thompson was an extraordinary woman. I knew her not terribly well, but I was honored to do so. And she had a whole lot to do with the establishment of this recycling center, which has now been going on quite a long time. I have been recycling here for almost the entire length of time it's been here. <coughs> um, interestingly enough, as a local realtor, um, the manager here, Charlie, was one of my clients and an extremely nice one to deal with. Um, I've arranged to talk with Charlie this morning uh, to give you some background on the place and, and what all it does. It brings people from all over and it also handles the recycling that takes place by truck in the community of Bloomsburg. Come on inside. This is a world of noise and busyness and bins of books and glass, clear, green, brown, newspapers, great place to recycle them, magazines and catalogs, office papers, lots of shredded stuff here, mixed paper, and a lot of this has been added. In the beginning, they didn't have most of this sort of stuff. Corrugated boxes. Miscellaneous plastics. Plastics are divided out into a whole lot of different kinds of things because they can't all go together when they get returned into use. No plastic bags. Please pay attention. No plastic bags. Don't leave them here. Most of the um, grocery stores have recycling for their own bags. Plastic bottles. That's your soda bottles mostly. Aluminum cans and steel cans. And this morning I am recycling some cans, namely cat food cans, which are aluminum. Turn into more aluminum cans and the level of noise here is frequently kind of high because you have cans and bottles and a whole lot of forklift stuff going on. And the forklift operators are really good at it. It's almost balletic to watch them wheel around and put them in place. The extraordinary number of cans for my household has to do with the animals in my household. So, and here comes one of the forklift guys. They are really good at it, man. They can make it spin right around. One of my favorite things is watching folks come in here with their little kids. There are more and more people here teaching children to recycle and to be aware of where things go and what happens to them. And here you can see some of the stuff that's stored up. Tons and tons are shipped out of here to be put back into use. And now I'm going to go find Charlie. And here comes the forklift with more stuff. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, okay. How are you? I'm okay. I just recycled some stuff and walked around and showed them all the bins. <laughs> okay. So this is Charlie, the manager of the recycling center for the town of Bloomsburg. How long have you been doing this, Charlie? I started 15 years ago. So 2002 was my first year on board as a recycling coordinator down here at Bloomsburg. What sorts of things could you recycle back then? Uh, the two things I would say that we added since I started, um, 
the first year I was on board, electronics became um, predominant, and we started recycling them. Uh, fortunately, we're in a situation right now where we're in limbo on our electronics recycling. Hopefully, to see the return of electronic recycling to our facility. But mixed paper was added in 2010, and in 2013, we added um, mixed plastic. That's your, your dairy and deli containers and everything like that, and our miscellaneous um, plastics collection bin out in our drop-off area. So those two items have become very popular with residents and as far as um, extra materials added over the course of time. How does a place like this function financially? Uh, the town is set up as a recycling facility, is um, operated through the funds that we generate through the sale of materials and also through the collection of our recycling fee for the services that we provide to town residents. Okay. Um, how does that work? How do you find people to take the stuff? Oh, uh, that's part of what I do here on a daily basis. I have a 15-year um, relationship with different brokers who have the relationship with the end users or the processors who are taking those products and making them into new products. So they know who needs the product, and I work with those people, and they ship it out so they can successfully match that up. How many tons of stuff go out of here on a, I don't know, weekly, monthly, yearly basis? Oh, average from 100 to 300 tons on a month, so, you know, about 2,000 tons on an annual basis, given an average. Wow, wow. Um, does the stuff get recycled here in this country? I'm guessing it does. Yeah, yeah, we have opportunities where people often want our materials to go overseas, but I, I always work with our local companies that keep our product as close to Bloomsburg as possible. In fact, 30 miles away is probably about the closest that we ship where we um, send on cardboard and paper products that can be helped made into drywall. I didn't know that's what happened to them. What happens to some of the stuff? I mean, that, that's interesting because I didn't know that happened to, to that kind of material. Um, newspaper can be made into um, newspaper again, or it can also be made into um, cellulose insulation. That's what they blow into the attics and everything. So there's companies that are local to us. Um, I had the opportunity to tour a plastic recycling plant in Lancaster County in Pennsylvania, and they take our plastic bottles, and what they do is make um, Adirondack chairs out of it or other forms of plastic lumber. Wow. Okay. I had no idea. Um, how do you get this word out to people? How does the public find out what happens to the junk that they're getting rid of? Well, I, anytime I have the opportunity to be invited to speak, I go out to schools or public groups and, and I do the publicity and outreach that way. Or um, I have a, a town newsletter, we had an article about us. But I also produce the annual town recycling calendar and that tells residents when to set out the materials. It also gives them information about our compost site. It also tells them information this year about the history because um, we're happy to say we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of our curbside recycling for Bloomsburg. Wow, 40 years. That, that's pretty remarkable. I think this was fairly forward thinking for towns this size. Um, who was Florence Thompson? Florence Thompson. She was the innovator behind the idea of getting recycling started and to do it as a curbside recycling where we go out to each individual household to collect that material. So at the time in 1977 when the recycling started, um, there were still town dumps. People were just able to throw things away and then those systems were closing up, so to alleviate the problem of waste reduction, um, recycling was um, really invigorated, and Florence was one of the founders in promoting and establishing Bloomsburg as a community to have recycling. I, I focused on the plaque outside. I was fortunate to know Florence slightly, not well, uh, many years ago, and she really was an extraordinary woman. You know, it's women power. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, she was quite fine. She was quite a, quite a function and a person in the community of Bloomsburg. She really loved this town. Yeah, she did. She did. As does Charlie. Um, you know, th th this is a tremendous service to a community. Charlie, thank you for your time. I appreciate it greatly. Certainly.